Hi, I'm Riley from Power Trip. I'm Chris from Power Trip. Hi, I'm Blake. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm Chris, I play bass in Power Trip. We're at Amoeba Records, and this is What's in My Bag. This is uh, one of the greatest American rock bands, ZZ Top. Trace Ombres, it's a great record. There's a lot of their records that I wanted to bring up here and talk about, but love this band. Um, if you don't like this band, I have some words for you. Great record, I think everybody in this band likes ZZ Top, we're from Texas. Amazing bands. Insane musicians. So many albums. Proud to say we're from the same state, for yeah. sure. Yeah. When I was growing up, uh, my mom would listen to a lot of Motown and Soul uh, when she was cleaning the house. So I've always really liked Marvin Gaye and Al Green. So I picked up uh, two records I don't have by them yet. Picked up the Bell album. It's a lesser known Al Green record. Loving You is one of my favorite songs by his. and. Georgia Boy and All in All are some really good songs too. Trouble Man is a really cool soundtrack. Marvin Gaye did it pretty much all by himself. It's a really good, good album to uh, get stoned to, honestly. Got me singing, yeah, yeah. Come upon me. This is one of my favorite bands of all time. The new Guided by Voices double album, uh, August by Cake. It uh, features the guitar player, Doug Gillard. I love the whole era of him being in the band. He's back in the band now, so. Robert Pollard, the main singer, is just a really good songwriter. He's a machine, he writes so many songs. He's a rock and roll encyclopedia. I have a lot of respect for him and everybody that's involved in this one. This is his 100th album, yeah. He's, he's a quantity guy, but he has a lot of quality in there, too. And running the roses are This is Yesterday's Fairy Tale, Tomorrow's Nightmare by Disclose, the band from Kochi City, Japan. And this is reissued by this label out of London called La Vida Es Un Moose, run by this cool ass dude named Paco. This band was a huge influence on the way that I would like listen to and understand the drums, and they have no bad songs. segue into another band that has no bad songs. I found this Wipers rarity. I believe it's a double record, yeah, yeah. It's a double 12 inch. It's got some songs that ended up going on to be on Greg Sage's solo album. His first one, Straight Ahead, and that's an album I really liked. This just kind of has like some demo recordings, some early, later era Wipers songs, but some like cool different mixes and stuff like that, so. The Wipers are like my favorite band in the world, so I just uh, feel really? like I should probably pick this up. Yeah, what gave that away? I don't know. So this is uh, the first six Sepultura albums. Basically picked this up because this band, I mean, I can speak for all of us, is probably a gigantic influence on our band. In my opinion, one of the top 10 greatest metal bands of all time. So many songs on this collection that I can't even begin to tell you how many songs are amazing on here, but I'd say Arise is probably their best record in my opinion. Probably the most complete and that they ever did. Kind of a good mix of the early stuff and before they got into the groove era. Yeah, I don't know, this is just a lot of albums that I really enjoy <laughs> by a band that I think is one of the best of all time metal-wise, so. This is this Swedish band uh, called Volcanoes. It's actually just one guy. I don't know if I would call it non-traditional, but it's really interesting uh, black metal, and he uses some pretty weird instrumentation. These records don't always make their way to like U.S. record stores, so uh, I saw it and I picked it up. I 
actually own both of these comics, but I wanted to give a shout out. This first one is Profit by Brandon Graham. And uh, this guy actually got his career started by drawing porno comics. But this is basically like a cool story. It's like a Conan in space. It's got a lot of like really big uh, spreads with a lot of details of different kind of aliens and battles and stuff like that. And it's just kind of a good, well-written comic for people who like adventure stories. This is called Material. I'm gonna give a shout out to my boy, Alish. He wrote this, his name's Alish Cott. It's four different stories of four different people in America like an actress, uh, a guy who was released from Guantanamo Bay, a black boy in Chicago growing up, some college philosopher who's like losing his mind. And they're kind of loosely related, but this guy's a really, really great writer. I think people should look out for him because I think he's gonna be a big name. I love these two books, check them out. Yeah, I'm sure I'm disappointing all our metal fans, but here's another one. <laughs> uh, I really, I love this album and it just got re-released and I don't have it, but I love the artwork. I have like a big poster on my wall. It's the first Blur record. I think it's the best. It's like kind of psychedelic, shoegazy, you know, but it's just a good, catchy, rip pop rock record. It's got the cool uh, It's got the cows, cows on the back. I mean, that's on the British back. as hell with the cows, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. it's so British. I love this record. I think the members all agree this is like their worst record and they hate it, but um, I just, I love it. That's not the way. That's not I'm gonna keep disappointing the metal fans here uh, and keeping it British. Yeah. Verve's first album. I had never heard this album until this tour, and Blake was playing it on like a night drive really late, and I was like, perfect vibe. I listened to the Verve when I was a kid, and I had the, uh, I can't remember what the album's called, it was the one with the Dead Urban, Space, Urban Hymns. Yeah, Urban Hymns. I had, I had that album when I was a kid, and I loved that album, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know nearly as much about music as I do now, but this is incredible. Uh, I don't know what I've been missing out on, but I can't stop listening to this album. It's just sonically really cool. It kind of drifts into all sorts of directions musically. Vibe, and vibe city. It's one of those ones you wake up in the morning and uh, throw it on the record player when you're chilling and just kind of let it, let it vibe out. So yeah, this is an amazing album. I'm excited to get this. This is a, a compilation of demos from this band from California, actually, called Nocturnal Blood. And uh, I really liked this band's demo. Hell's Headbangers recently reissued this compilation, and I did not know that this existed until today when I was shopping around. So this is a very cool thing for me to pick up. And I actually haven't, so I think there's something like four demos on this whole thing, and I haven't heard all of them. So I'm really excited to listen to this when I get back home. It's like, uh, Black and death metal type stuff. The good shit. Sturgill Simpson, A Sailor's Guide to Earth. This guy uh, kind of ignited my love for country music again. Everything he's put out is incredible. And he was putting out country records, and then as soon as he became the greatest country artist around, he put out a soul record. So I thought that was really cool. Sturgill Simpson, this dude rocks. Incredible live, too. This is Those Once Loyal on, I guess, some um, special edition record store day gold vinyl. This is probably my favorite, definitely top three favorite death metal bands in the world. This is the last album they put out. After that, they were kind of like, well, we did the best album we possibly could. And they just broke up and never wrote another song since then. And I thought that was like the coolest thing a band could do. This is my favorite album by them, so I'm really excited to have it on vinyl. I'm gonna keep it British, <laughs> once again. Uh, Killing Joke, Nighttime, just like really cool post-punk band. Yeah, I don't know, we listened to this album for a long time. The beats on it are really cool, like the way that all the, the patterns on their songs are, have always been cool to me, and they, they keep it pretty political, which I like too. Sick music videos, I don't know. This is just a 
really cool album that I've always been into. So if you haven't heard this album by this band, listen to this album. I got the new Juice and Mary Chain album, Damage and Joy. Uh, I haven't really listened to anything they've done recently, but I heard a song off this and it sounded really good. I really like their stuff they did, you know, in the 80s and even the early 90s. I saw them do Psycho Candy front to back a couple years ago, so I think they still got it and I'm excited to listen to it. Prisoner, guy I'm sure you guys know him around here. One of my favorite songwriters, has been since middle school, high school. I love pretty much everything he's done, Whiskey Town, stuff with the Cardinals. I'm a big fan of country music and he was kind of, he has, he touches on that stuff a lot and yeah, great record. Definitely check this out. Great record. Yeah. Great dude. Everyone here agrees. Good guy. Mother, we can do better. An LP from a band called Carass for Us, which is uh, Pete Hellcamp from Angel Corpse's project. This is uh, both of their records on one record. Hell's Headbangers and Osmos just reissued this, I think, last year, or issued this. It's pretty cool. I had missed a chance to order it when it came out, but I found it here. Again, black death metal stuff. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, uh, this is Half Free by U.S. Girls. My friend Meg Remy is the main brain behind this project. Came out on 4AD and it's kind of all over the place musically, but every song she is telling a different story about a woman kind of in like a shitty situation. So like the song Damn That Valley is about a woman who lost her husband in Afghanistan. It kind of has like this like reggae feel to it, but then like some of the other songs might be more like garage rock or like just traditional pop influenced stuff. But uh, this is one of my favorite albums when it came out and I think Meg is a, a genius. Yeah.